Smilodon, the deadliest cat that ever lived. Have you heard the legends about saber-toothed cats? About magnificent animals which appeared on the evolution arena almost simultaneously with Homo sapiens, and then gone forever, what sapiens and Smilodons met? What a weird coincidence! Smilodons were mysterious, fascinating, and incredibly beautiful. Well, from a cat lover perspective, of course. These big cats were once the masters of the ancient land and lived like kings. But their reign ended, and now we only have bones and Chauvet cave pictures that can tell us about the lives of these ancient predators. So, if you're a fan of saber-toothed cats, or any cats for that matter, I invite you to take a little peek into the world of Smilodon, the deadliest feline that ever walked on Earth. Let's meet the mighty Smilodons. It's a very tempting thought to think that your sweet little kitty is a descendant of a terrific Smilodon. You know, when it bites into your leg every time you forget to feed it on time, you may assume that. Actually, the truth is that the last common ancestor of Machera Dontini, saber-toothed cat's family, and modern cats lived about 20 million years ago. Not exactly first cousins, right? As for Smilodon, the first members of the species showed up on this planet about 2.5 million years ago, and about 11,000 years ago, they sadly became extinct. Scientists recognized three species of Smilodon, Smilodon populator, Smilodon fatalis, Smilodon gracilis. There's a theory that the first two evolved from Smilodon gracilis, and all three species lived alongside one another throughout the Pleistocene. The first documented findings of Smilodon fossils are dated back to the 1830s. Danish naturalist Peter Wilhelm Lund found remains of the big ancient cat with long and sharp teeth. He named the animal he discovered Smilodon populator, after two Greek words, smile, which means scalpel, and odontus, which means tooth. And the word populator in this name means devastator, because it was that big. Two other species of Smilodon were documented later in the 19th century. There were also many other described species of Smilodon, but for now, the scientific community recognizes only these three. The size of Smilodon According to the paleontological finds, the biggest one of the Smilodon family was a populator. The tiniest was Gracilis. Modern big cats are comparable with Smilodons, but it's worth noting that saber-toothed cats were built very differently from them. They were more stocky and had much shorter tails. So, the populator, the biggie of the family, was, according to scientists, not more than 3.9 to 4.6 feet, 1.2 to 1.4 meters high, and about 7.8 to 8.5 feet, 2.3 to 2.6 meters long. It had a short tail that was about 12 inches, 30 centimeters long. The average populator weighed from 397 to 770 pounds, 180 to 350 kilograms, with some grand members of the family weighing up to 882 pounds, 400 kilos. That was a true killing machine in a furry coat. The second largest Smilodon was Smilodon fatalis. It was a little smaller than its bigger brother, but still pretty huge. The typical fatalis was about 6.9 feet, 2.1 meters long, without a tail, and about 4 feet, 1.2 meters tall. It was also much lighter than the populator, and weighed somewhere from 352 to 617 pounds, 160 to 280 kilograms. Still, not a tiny kitten. And the last, but not the least, in this fabulous saber-toothed family, the beautiful Smilodon gracilis. As the alleged ancestor of other Smilodons, Gracilis gave all the best to its kids and was left in history as the smallest of the family. So, Gracilis was about 6.5 feet, 2 meters long, and 2.3 to 2.6 feet, 75 to 80 centimeters tall. Its estimated weight was only 110 to 330 pounds, 50 to 150 kilograms, which is not so bad if you consider the deadly teeth Gracilis possessed. The Habitat all Smilodons lived all around the Americas. They probably lived in groups like lions and chose forests or bush to live in. Tropical forests and savanna were everywhere in the Americas around that historical period, and many large animals lived there. So, Smilodons probably inhabited woody areas to be around the prey when it was time to eat. Smilodon fatalis lived primarily in Northern America. 
The northernmost location where the bones were found is in Alberta, Canada. Paleontological finds show that Fatalis lived all around Northern America, but in the late Pleistocene, it entered the southern part of the continent and chose the eastern part of the Andes to live. As for Populato, he lived in Southern America alongside Crocilus, and its habitat was on the western part of Andes. However, the remains of both species were found on the opposite parts of the land, so they all probably met each other from time to time. What did they eat? The diet of a saber-toothed cat. Smilodonts were megafauna and apex predators, which means that they could eat pretty much everyone and everything they wanted. Isotope analysis of Smilodon fatalis' bones showed that ancient bison and camels were their typical prey. As for the southern Smilodon populato, they enjoyed eating toxodons, ground sloths, and ancient horses. The method of hunting was different from modern cats since Smilodons had those big teeth and they had to use them. They didn't choke their prey, but instead Smilodons plunged their fangs into a prey's throat, then tore and broke a victim's neck. Why have these marvelous cats gone extinct? One theory postulates that big cats evolved together with Homo sapiens and other members of our extended primate family because they were specialized predators for primates. Moreover, countless remains of early homos with large cat's tooth marks on bones show it wasn't the most pleasant relationship, at least for humans. As for Smilodonts, they had no clue that somewhere over the seas one annoying species lived. They're called humans, and they'd love to come one day to look at the Smilodon's lands. But like with almost every case of extinction, it's not all the humans' fault. Actually, Smilodons were already in danger long before the first Homo sapiens put his or her foot onto Smilodon's territory. The combination of climate change, increased competition, and lack of food due to the quaternary extinction of megafauna resulted in the loss of these big cats. Smilodon with other big cats Smilodons were not the only felines in the ancient tropical forests and savanna of the Americas. They were one of the toughest and strongest, but they still had neighbors who were big, scary, and cats too. One of those cats was Homotherium, a scimitar's toothed cat who lived worldwide, including in the Smilodon's natural habitat, the Americas. Homotheriums and Smilodons were members of one subfamily. There's enough evidence about the cohabitation of Smilodons and Homotheriums all around the Americas. However, scientists don't know exactly whether they were good neighbors or they had a great rivalry. There was another big cat that lived in the Americas at that time, the American Lion. It was a decent competitor for Smilodon. He was the second biggest cat in the world at that time, and only the Populator was bigger than it. American lions weighed up to 881 pounds, 400 kilos, with the average weight of a typical specimen being about 771 pounds, 350 kilograms. It could be from 5.2 to 8.2 feet, 1.6 to 2.5 meters in length, and had a nice tail just like Smilodonts. As opposed to Homotheriums, which probably occupied another ecological niche, American lions and Smilodons allegedly were competitors in one niche. It could be fascinating to see the rivalry between the two. The Future of Smilodon The scientific community reports that many Smilodon's fossils were found in such good shape that it's possible to recreate its DNA and make the resurrection of these cats possible. It's believed that with the help of a surrogate lioness, we can one day see a little baby Smilodon. What do you think? Do you want to see a Smilodon walking around in modern zoos? Or do you think it should stay in the past?